In this video, I'm going to show you my design and build for a pair of DML or distributed mode loudspeakers with hidden wall mounts. The first pair of these I met were meticulously crafted in a flat black with custom stands and they sounded fantastic. And of course, they're inspired by the Tech Ingredients YouTube channel. And I can't believe how good these things sound. And most people that see mine, they think they're fabric covered acoustic tiles. But if you touch them even lightly, you can see that they're fully suspended and have no solid contact with the walls. So like most of these panel speakers, they're actually hanging in position by nylon threads. And if you look in the back here, you can get an idea. You can see the exciter. It's got plenty of distance from the wall. And if you just touch the unit gently, you can see that it's fully suspended by the nylon threads, which is what you want. You want to avoid having a rigid physical contact between the panel and the wall. This is the space I was going to put it in. And as you can see, it's quite a distance to the ceiling. And I knew that if I used nylon cord all the way to the ceiling, then even the slightest breeze, these things would be swaying around. So let's get into the build. I started with a one inch thick polystyrene foam board, which was readily available in 24 inches square at the local hardware store. And as you can see, I use the very scientific method of radiusing the corners by tracing a lid that was about five inches diameter. And I just handheld a blade. This material is so fragile, it cuts very easily. I found hand holding the blade was more than enough for me. You'll end up with a jagged corner and my quarter sheet palm sander made quick work of cleaning that up. And once you get the rough edges done with the palm sander, then I just used a hand sander because we still have a sharp edge here. And the power sander would be way too much. The material is too fragile. So I just gently removed the sharp edge with a hand sanding block. It's pretty easy to do. And then I use the corners to make tripods for where I'm going to paint these panels. And what you can't see easily is I also used the hand sanding block to put a parallel grain on the surface. And that's because I'm going for sort of a fabric look. And I'll end up also brush painting along that same grain to get an even better fabric appearance. And here's the final product. This is the front side of the panels. And again, it's a little bit difficult to see, but there is a parallel grain on the front of these panels. It, they do look like fabric. And these are the exciters. These are the Dayton Audio 24 watt exciters. I've got a part number that you can use. For this mounting system, we needed to know the height of the exciter. And it's about three quarter inch. And so we're going to have more than enough space with this mounting system. In choosing the height of the cotter pin that we're going to use as a mounting pin, I ended up going with a two inch cotter pin for this mounting system. The nice thing about cotter pins, of course, is that you can bend them. And so for each of these pins, what I did was I looped over the end to make sort of a structural anchor that we're going to embed into the adhesive. And once you do that for each of the pins, then you need to lay out your panel dimensions. And one of these panels is going to have the exciter two-fifths from the side, three-fifths from the bottom, and the other one's going to have it dead center. So what worked well is I've got seven inches down from the top and six inches from the side for each of the two top posts. And for the bottom pins, we're just going to center them at two inches and 10 inches from the bottom edge. And that will accommodate both a centered exciter and a two fifths, three fifths location for the exciter. Now I've got a quarter inch bit and you see the tape on there. You really have to pay attention to controlling the depth on these holes. The material is extremely fragile. And so you'll notice I'm using very short controlled bursts with the drill to prevent any kind of damage because the drill will try to wonder and I'm not using a drill press. So just be very careful with that. And once you're done, then vacuum out all the particles from inside the holes. You want the holes to be empty. And what I did is I used a block and another cotter pin to make hanging blocks. And this is going to be to hold the mounting pins in position at the same height while the adhesive is drying. 
And once you get all those into place, then you're ready to start injecting your adhesive. And I found that hot glue worked great. It's got a good stiffness, it dries fairly quickly, and it adheres very well to these foam panels. And again, it's very important to control the depth of these holes so that you don't get too close to the front surface of the panel. And also notice that the loops and the pins all go side to side, and that's fairly important for this mounting system. And another nice thing about hot glue is less than 20 minutes later, you can pull your mounts away and the mounting posts are done. Now again, those top posts are gonna end up getting bent. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just prepping the spot where I'm gonna attach the exciter. It's a little roughed up with paint, so I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth it out. Then we can peel off the adhesive and attach the exciter. This particular panel has the centered exciter. Now while the other panel is drying, and I'm gonna show you the trim piece that I used for the wall mount. This one is 5 8 by about an inch. You could also use one half by three quarter for your wall mount. And again, that's gonna sit right above the top posts. And a second one is going to sit on the wall between the bottom posts. And here's what they look like. I've given them some wall paint and on the back, I've got furniture pads. Uh, that's not only to protect the wall, but it's also going to allow the piece to be moved for leveling purposes. Now the upper loop, which I'm tying to the top posts, and again, we're gonna be bending these top posts for adjustments later, but for now, I put about, I started with about a 31, 32 inch length loop, and we're gonna be hanging those on the wall mount. For the lower post, you don't need a loop. You're just gonna tie a straight line between the two, as tight as you can get it, and most likely, as tight as you can get it, still isn't gonna be tight enough for a good suspension. So I'll show you a trick that I used. Once you've got it tied in place, you know, I'll bring it a little bit closer. Your knot's gonna be on the inside of the loop, so just flip it up over the top to the upper part, and now you've got a nice tight line, and that's what you want. So now we've got them mounted on the wall, and you can see I've got the wire with a little pigtail on it ready to go. And again, this upper one can be moved back and forth for leveling purposes. And when you're adjusting the cotter pin, they're definitely bendable, but you wanna grab the base with one pair of pliers while you bend the cotter pin. That protects the base of the pin where it's mounted into the panel. We're bending the cotter pins to adjust how far the top of the panel hangs from the wall. We're ready to hang this, and to hang it, I found it's easiest to just hang the loop on the furthest screw first and then it's easier to put the loop over the nearest screw. Now we finished adjusting the cotter pins on the right channel speaker so we can go ahead and hang that and when you're bending the cotter pin what you're doing is you're trying to establish a uniform distance from the wall from the top to the bottom and it looks like we've succeeded here with about an inch and a half distance. And you can see again, we're fully suspended. My goal was to show how to build these in less than a 10 minute video and I've succeeded. But to give you any kind of a comparison, I'm going to need music. I found this excellent sample in the YouTube free music library. You can see the details in the video description, but it has a broad range of frequencies that makes it useful for this incredibly non-scientific comparison that we're doing. What I've done is kept the system volume and the microphone position constant for all three recordings. So let's start with the tower speakers alone. Okay, so now we're gonna hear just the DML panels. This last recording combines the DML panels with the tower speakers, and we're gonna let it run a little bit longer into some lower frequencies.
If you like this video, please do give a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. And if you know anybody else trying to build these, please do share this video. Thanks for watching.